morning. I think I'm live. Good morning, everyone. Let's just get this set up, make sure everything's okay. If you're out there, say hi, so I know this thing is actually working. Well, okay, let's just double check. Whoop. Okay, so good morning. Uh, wait, wait, what do we do here? Nope. Okay. So hi, I am Karen DeSena. Um, that's Karen. I commonly get called Karen, Kieran, Corinne, sometimes even Kevin in my mail because of the spelling, K-E-R-I-N. Uh, best way to try to remember my name is Erin with a K. That's how most people actually remember me. I was actually even announced into my friend's wedding one time uh, as a bridesmaid. Here comes Erin with a K. So <laughs> I'm used to it. So good morning to everyone. Um, good morning, Essentially Powerful. And everyone who's out there today, I wanted to first start with a shout out. I wanna say thank you. Uh, first, thank you to Pam for having this amazing page. This group has been amazing. Um, thank you to the rest of the Essentially Powerful team. I would like to also thank my team leaders, Lonnie Catalano and Daniela May, uh, who have been gems in my oil journey as well as all the people on Oil Infused Living for all of their input has helped me learn. I would also like to thank all the members of the Crossline Business, excuse me, the Crossline Mastermind Group. Um, these are girls who inspire me on a weekly, daily basis. Um, amazing, I continue to learn every day. And uh, I would also like to thank those in the business group. I've been learning so much in the business group, they've been amazing. So. You know, my early journey started about three and a half years ago, and I was actually in another group. Um, I had kind of just signed up with someone, and then I met a friend who was part of Oil Infused Living and Essentially Powerful, and she, I was blown away by everything she was learning and all the people that she was in contact with that I just had to be in this group. So I took all the necessary measures, and I gave my sincere um apologies and expressed myself to uh, my original um, enroller who was more than understanding. I was also a new mom, so it made sense that I would wanna be around my mommy friends and learning more from them. So um, I made the switch and it has been quite a journey and I just can't even tell you like how exciting it's been. Um, I've been a little bit of what they call like a slow burn. Um, I didn't, you know, kind of jump right into everything. I definitely started with my thieves cleaner and diffusing. Um, that's just something I just took on immediately. And then as I learned and I took classes and I paid attention on the group pages and I now attending business meetings, like I can't tell you the number of changes in my life. Um, I've done quite, quite a bit of work with the ditch and switch. So to those who are watching, hopefully you are watching because it does say live and I'm still a little bit nervous about this. Um, to those who are, welcome to day nine of 10 days to ditch and switch with Young Living um, and Essentially Powerful. So I have to tell you, I am what they call a scent girl. I was all about my scents um, in my house, on my body, Wherever I could get scented, I was scented. I, um, I basically, if I had an office at work, it was swimming in reed diffusers. Um, if I had home, every one of my rooms had a different smell. We had a little cinnamon in the kitchen or a little citrus in the kitchen. We had a little bit of linen in the bedroom. Always burning something, plugging in something, point, putting something in the room to scent up my house. Um, body, oh my goodness. When I found a perfume I loved, I stuck with it. I never let it go. It was my perfume. I am a go-to fragrance girl. So when I started learning about fragrance, um, I'm sure most of you hopefully had seen Rachel's presentation the other day, amazing on fragrance. Um, when I started learning about fragrance, I was blown away by knowing about all those things that could possibly be in the things I was using in my home on my body, 
and on my family. It just blew me away and the changes started happening. They didn't happen overnight. It was very hard to say goodbye to some of my products. Scent girls do not let go that easy, um, but I did it. I really did it and I feel so good about it. And it's like, um, I think use the term whitewashed, like I whitewashed my nose. So now when I actually smell like some of those synthetic, you know, fragrances um, or like things that are filled with artificial fillers and chemicals, um, I, I know right away. It's like I get like an instant headache or I'm like, oh, it just kind of skews me out a little bit. So, you know, I mean, that's a good thing, right? So anyway, so one thing I do find that I am really loving um, in, because I do need scents obviously, so I diffuse, as you can see, some diffusers back here. I'm actually diffusing right now out of my desert mist. We have a lantern and the queen Aria, of course, just to show you a few. So one thing I really enjoy is taking my diffusers and using them to like decorate my house a little bit. Um, so like, Right now it's kind of covered in like little per little people things too. I have kind of some toys over there. Um, but I love like putting them in rooms and decorating with them. Um, so like depending on your decor style, like it depends on how your, you know, your, um, your home is. Are you like chic or boho or vintage or traditional or um, farmhouse? So it's kind of like depends on transitional, like it depends on, and there are like diffusers that kind of fit all those needs. So I use it as like de decor. I also change the colors depending on my mood. You can't really tell right now. Um, there we go. Can't really, whoop, kind of a little funny light there. Hold on. You can't really tell right now, but it's purple. There we go. Okay. I'm getting a little funny light, pardon me. Okay, there we go. So, Mine right now is purple. I find purple very calming, so I thought it might be nice to stay calm, cool, and collected. I also doused myself with a little bit of white Angelica before this presentation to surround myself with some support from above um, so I could remain calm, cool, and collected so I could share this important information with you all, okay? It also helped me uh, get some wins at bingo last night, white Angelica. So, diffusers. How do we use a diffuser? Hi there, Lonnie. I'm live, yay! Um, how do we use a diffuser? Well, you add water. You add water to the line um, and you start with your chosen drops. I usually recommend to any of my new Young Living um, friends and family members to start with maybe two to four, just because some oils are a little bit stronger in scent than others and you don't wanna overwhelm yourself. And then build up, especially if you're using two. Some could be stronger, some could be more floral, some could be more minty. You might wanna use two to bring it down. There are so many beautiful single oils that can be used together, and there are so many beautiful blends. It's like out of this world insane um, how many options there are. So really use, I always say use your nose. You know, when people ask me, well, what do I do? How much do I put? How many drops? Don't, don't worry yourself with that. Just put what feels comfortable to you and what feels good to you and what smells good to you. You wanna feel good in your surroundings, right? You wanna feel good in your environment, so trust yourself. I'm sure you're all making good decisions every day for yourself, do it with your diffuser. Um, the best part of the diffusing, in addition to making my house look really pretty and smelling really pretty, is it has supportive elements like it's providing me with some immune support some respiratory support um there are oils for tantrum taming for calming for going to sleep for resting for energy for focus when you're just feeling run down or you're just feeling sad and you want to be pepped up or you're feeling sad and you want to remain sad you just want to just kind of chill and just be in your place there's the feelings kit there's all these different oils that are, can really speak to you um, I really have learned that when I stand in front of my oils in the morning, that I'm like, hmm, I think I'm gonna use da da da. Maybe I'm gonna say I want Valor today. But then I'm like, I'm like, no, I actually don't. And I stop for a second and I say to myself, well, what is it that you do want? And then I, it comes to me. And then I'm like, that's what I need. And then um, my amazing leader, um, had pointed out to me too, there were a few scents in the beginning that I didn't even like. I was like, oh, not the scent for me, but that's okay, right? I swear the two scents that were like my least favorite are now like my top five. Like how crazy is that? But it's because maybe that's what my body was calling for. Maybe that's what my body actually needed. And that's why, you know, in the beginning I was a little resistant. 
So I don't want to go too long with me. Um, another great reason that we can use oils is for um, after cooking. So I don't know about any of you, if you have a little Italian cooking going on at home or a little ethnic cooking going on, the house can get a little smelly. Onions are strong. Hi there, Julia, Michelle, nice to see you. Um, so I love to diffuse with purification after cooking. Um, sometimes I'll throw in some lemon just because it's a fresh scent, especially if you have people coming over afterwards. You know, yeah, you want them to smell your yummy, delicious food, but you also want them to smell and feel the beautiful scents and aromas in your home and your environment, right? So there are different types of diffusers, as I showed you. Um, we have the Desert Mist, which is purple. There's my lantern, there's my Aria. Um, I also have the Dewdrop and the Haven, which is a lovely ceramic one that came out um, during convention. And no, was it during convention or holiday launch? I might be lying. Um, last year. So the one great thing about them is they can go for like a minimum of like 10 hours. Um, they have different light settings. They have music. Um, the Aria plays beautiful spa music. Um, Feather the Owl, he's next on my list. Um, he can give relaxing rain music or the sound of a fan or white noise. And they're humidifiers, so you gotta love that, right? So you're getting a little bit of extra humidification in there as well. Um, as well as Feather also comes with a nightlight, which is nice for your little ones if you're ready to diffuse for your little guys and girls. Um, why should we diffuse? So to me, the goal is to scent, but not to mask. I don't want to mask an odor, right? I'm not just trying to kill, I, not, excuse me, I'm not trying to mask the onion smell. I'm trying to actually kill the onion smell, right? So when you're using a scent in the bathroom, I don't know if you guys, the ladies, men, gentlemen, whoever's watching this, have people in the house that, you know, have stinky ones. Do you really want to smell like Hawaiian scented poop? No. I want to eliminate the scent. So therefore, I love using my little spray bottles too. So I make little spray bottles for the bathroom. Purification, fun little um, labels that you can get at a number of different shops. Um, so again, I don't, I'm not looking to mask, I'm looking to actually eliminate. So the thing about the diffusing, um, and I don't want to mix this up because I want to be able to give you this good information. The goal should be to alter the structure of the molecules that create the odor rather than mask them. Diffusers diffuse cold air. The cold air, it's an atomizer. Some of them are atomizers. So the atomizer, you're atomizing microfine mist, okay? You can't really tell um, by looking at it on this video. <clears throat> but you're m making a mist of essential oils, which then remain suspended in the air. So they're there for several hours. So they can really get to the structure of the molecule behind the scents, okay? It's different than an aroma lamp or a candle because an aroma lamp or a candle has to be heated. Again, diffusers um, diffuse cold air. So when you're heating or burning, you may render that therapeutic oils benefits less beneficial, if that makes sense. Um, the one thing I, I think I say that a lot. The one, the third thing I love about Young Living is obviously you've heard of the Seed to Seal program. I'm sure from any of these amazing speakers you heard over the past two weeks and anyone you've heard in this group, the Seed to Seal program. It makes me feel so good to know that the oils that I am choosing to diffuse in my home or wear on my body or put on my family's body are really checked like they really check their stuff they know the geographical region that they're growing the plants the seeds in the plants in um they check the soil they check the soil i mean how great is that you know to any of my gardeners out there i like to dabble in gardening i'm not great but i enjoy it and i actually find it refreshing for the soul um just being in fresh dirt like think about it how nice that is um so they really pay attention to the geographical region the soil the harvesting time um the climate the actual altitude of where it's growing. I mean, there are farms, you know, everywhere. Um, Young Living is very particular about where they do this and their distillation of the oil from the plant, the seed to seal, right, uh, happens in steel chambers, right? You want to be in steel chambers where there's low pressure, low temperatures, because you want to preserve those oils. You don't want anything too high, all right? Um, as some of those, again, you know, the essential oil constituents can be destroyed by too high a temperature or pressure. So, 
So that's one really strong reason why I feel good about that. Yes, I'm looking at my paper to make sure. <laughs> okay, so um, for those who have little ones and don't feel comfortable, I always say trust your senses. You know, um, you wanna trust your sense about when to diffuse, what to diffuse. If something feels too strong, don't use it. Use something lighter. Look into the kids' lines. Um, look into the seedlings' lines. They have beautiful um, scents, calming scents that are more, um, um, uh, what's the word? <laughs> uh, I lost the word. I'm sorry. I'm like, um, I completely forgot the word. So anyway, so you're going to use the scents that feel good to you and feel good for your family. Okay. If you feel really uncomfortable about um, using it, you can, I always put some in my hair and then I'll just like pick up my son and I'll be like, oh, and I give him a little hug and I'm like, oh, get a nice little scent of lavender and frankincense and feel so good and so safe and so calm and no tantrum. <laughs> anyway, so I've been diffusing um, all season. I, one of the best parts is being able to diffuse um, seasonal things. I love diffusing. Um, orange and cinnamon in the fall, this yang yang and the spring with some citrus fresh and joy, all these lovely floral scents that get me ready to, for the spring, uh, raven and thieves in the winter months, um, lemon, lavender, and peppermint all the time, um, peace and calming, vanilla, vanilla and peppermint, Christmas spirit all around Christmas and the holidays and all through winter, really awesome. And then I love making them into my little bottles for room spray. So I have holiday scents room spray. We had, oh, I even, actually I'll show you that later. Um, pumpkin spice was in the fall. So lots of different options. I'm gonna ask you ladies if you would share some of your favorite diffuser blends um, today to share with the group uh, so they can get more ideas as well. Always be sure to clean your diffuser after use. Uh, you know, there are some people, you know, use a little bit of thieves cleaner. Some people use a toothbrush. Anyone who has an idea of what works best for them, please feel free to share it. So one thing that I would like to get out there today also is the one thing that I gave up um, as scent girl was um, my candles. Now, I didn't think I would ever be able to give up my candles because they were my candles and I spent years like choosing my favorite scents and everything else. And like I am with my diffusing, I was a little bit obsessed with my candles. Candles were known to relax and provide ambiance and be lit during ceremonies, religious ceremonies, spiritual ceremonies, sweet 16s, you know, we just, we love our candles, right? Until I found out. So candles have, um, can emit what they call VOCs, vol volatile organic compounds, okay? Volatile organic compounds are things that we find often in like um, household supplies, um, refrigerants, um, uh, petroleum fuels, hydraulic fluids, paints, okay? You ever hear somebody say, once you're done painting, don't leave open containers of paint, you know, in a room because those scents, honestly, they can be admitted all the time. Um, they can be emitted even when they're not being burned, Just, okay? So even having a candle in your home that you're not burning could be emitting VOCs. Now this is the way I can explain this the best to you. There are a lot of things in this world that we cannot control, correct? Unfortunately, a lot. So what we can control, we try to control. I'm trying to control. I'm sure in so many ways you're trying to control and protect your families, right? So if you can make a change, you make the change. I can't exactly pull my insulation out of my house, right? So there are VOCs probably being admitted from the insulation in my house, not to try to scare everybody. Um, but there's only certain things that we can control. So when we can, we will. Um, Concentrations are, as you, if anyone who listened to um, Nicole's presentation the other day on thieves, air pollution is higher indoors than it is outdoors. Um, you, it could be like two to five times higher, which is really scary. Um, volatile organic compounds, just to come back to them. So I'm going to read to you. VOCs are compounds that have a high vapor pressure, low water solubility. They're human-made chemicals. 
okay? Primarily paints, pharmaceuticals, refrigerants. These are also the things that might be admitted from the photocopy machine in the, in the copy room at work um, that you might be picking up on. Um, glues, adhesives, I believe permanent markers was another one. So again, trust your nose. <laughs> like I really believe that. Even before I knew all this information, which I'm still learning, I always was like, wait, something doesn't smell right. Something doesn't feel right. Like it's so important to like trust your own senses. You have these God-given senses, so use them. Um, and if it doesn't feel right, don't use it. I mean, no matter what it is. Uh, there's a lot of controversy about this because there are no peer-reviewed studies that show these results. However, I found quite a number of references and citations from on PubMed, from National Institute of Health, from the World Health Organization, um, the United States Environmental Protective Agency, lung associations, because there are some there is some research that it can be connected to asthma related, excuse me, respiratory related issues like asthma. Um, there can be a carcinogenic effect, um, some developmental um, disability, developmental um, d disturbance, excuse me, developmental disturbances. Um, children who might be getting more lower respiratory infections because of matters in the air. Again, no peer reviewed studies, but I'm reading and I made the choice, okay? I can't say, I'm not a scientist. I really don't even know if I should be talking about VOCs. I'm not a scientist, but I'm telling you what I'm reading, what I'm hearing from the group, that burning a candle could be like, honestly being around secondhand smoke. So if that makes it more, you know, um, real for you. But do your research, do your research, trust yourself and make changes where you can. Um, also, there was some um, information I was reading about the actual wick. I guess they stopped using lead wicks because lead wicks were really dangerous. So anybody who's using, continues to use candles, chooses paper or cotton. Um, there was a lot of issue with paraffin wax that I read about. Uh, to my understanding, it's not being used anymore. Uh, a lot of people are making their own candles using beeswax, soy, pollen, vegetable wax. There were a couple of other ones. Um, but remember, anything you're burning might leave behind soot. Soot. <laughs> so um, remember, those are kind of things you want to pay attention to as well. I also did some reading about aerosol spray products. So that's why you keep seeing me grabbing my little bottles here. Um, you ever walk into like an office building and you use the bathroom or you go to the doc a big doctor's office building or something and you go to use the bathroom and there's that scent just like kind of like shooting at you through the vents. Um, it's like so overwhelming to me. And I know it's like because they have big crowds using those bathrooms and they want to use fresheners, but I swear I leave there with like a headache. It's not ventilated. There's no windows. You got all this like freshener blowing at you and it just doesn't feel good to me. Um, I understand they're trying to mask odors, but to me it's like, I don't know, it's just increasing toxicity, but it's just me. Um, I'm sure you know somebody who says like, oh gosh, I can't walk into the department store or walk into a candle store. I get like an instant headache. I can't stay in those stores. Even before Young Living, I could not stand in those stores for very long. I was like, scent overload. I was like, oh, it's too many scents. Oh, this poor girl, she has to work here all day long, this poor thing with all these scents. Did I know then what I know now? Please go back and watch Rachel's... Um, presentation on fragrances is scary, really scary, okay? So if you are still using your candles, by all means, all I would suggest to you is to use them for a short amount of time or maybe in a more ventilated area. That's actually usually the recommendation um, is to actually use them for a short amount of time um, and you want to be ventilated. But it, you know, it's a personal choice. Uh, as they say with everything, like use it in moderation. I just, I don't want to think about it. Like, I just don't want to have to think about it. I have so many other things to think about, so I'd rather diffuse. And I follow the instructions on when and how to diffuse and what's safe and how, for how long, and that's what I do. I get the benefits of my scent at home. It, it meets me where I need to be for my current mood or the goal of what kind of mood I'm trying to establish, whether to bring myself down because I'm doing a live presentation or to bring myself down to go to sleep or to get pepped up because I have people coming over and I'm entertaining or whatever it is, immunity support. Um, if it smells funky, question it, okay? Trust your senses. I can't tell you that enough. Please do your research and trust your senses. If it's too much and it's giving you a headache, 
There's a reason behind it. My poor mom, I feel terrible. My sister and I used to wear this perfume and we loved it, okay? I wore it for years. I got complimented galore on this stuff. Now I can't even stand the smell of it. And my poor mom would be like, oh, you're giving me a headache with that stuff. And I was like, mom, I'm heading out. I have to like go out, you know, with my girlfriends and, you know, meet people. And um, so she was like, she dealt with it, but then I felt bad. So I started putting it on by the door. I swear I have since apologized to my mom that she was obviously having a reaction to my fragrance. I felt terrible. Anyway, so I don't mean to say anyway, I really do feel bad about my mom. Um, so I'm just checking the look. So yeah, so air fresheners, um, you just really, you know, don't always believe the hype. Might say all green, all natural on the packaging. There's not a lot of regulatory standards with that, okay? In order to something that's considered organic, all green and natural um, with essential oils might only have 5% of the botanical actually in there. So don't always believe the hype. Do your own research, look it up. Um, there's a lot of marketing ploys. Don't not be pulled in. Um, bam, ba, ba. So yes, yeah, so basically we talked about, you know, some of the um, negative effects that some of these artificial things can have. And that's about all I really wanted to tell you. Um, I would say, I'm not telling you to go home and like after these two weeks and like throw everything in your house away. Um, that's definitely not what I'm suggesting. Um, I was a slow burn. I really was. I've been at this for three and a half years. And, you know, I, I told you, I started with Thieves Cleaner. I didn't know about, you know, all the other things you could do with Thieves. Please check out Nicole's and she'll learn. I didn't know all about the supplements. Please check out Lonnie and Christine. You'll see. Um, there are so many different things. It, to me, it's like one big old um, book and I take it one chapter at a time and that's how I feel and I trust what I feel and it's about balance and I do what feels good for myself and for my family so oh just to let you know sorry so what I ended up doing because I didn't want to put things to waste so this was something I had gotten years ago it looks a little old but I used to take it out at Christmas time and I used to put a little tea light in there but I don't want to let it go because it looks really cute so what did I do pardon my this so I got these cute little labels, holidays, holiday scents. Um, this is not my best bottle, but you can buy these cute little labels and you can make use of them and just stick it in there, right? Because why not? Like you got it right there. Um, so you don't have to waste. And all of my bathrooms now have room spray. They either say room spray or purification. Um, I often put lemon in there. Purification? Oh my gosh, please check out Purification. It is so strong and so amazing. It knocks things out, okay? Knocks them out of the ballpark. So check it out. Anyway, um, other things you can do, you really honestly, you don't feel good. You're, you wanna get your candles out, but you're not ready for a diffuser or you don't know what you wanna do. Open your window, smell the beauty of the air. Feel the crisp air in the springtime. Smell the fresh cut green grass. You don't need fresh cut green grass in a bottle, um, in a, excuse me, in a glass bottle that you can burn. You can smell it outside your window, okay? Get the feel for your room. Does it need a little extra color? Add in a diffuser. If it doesn't need a little extra something, put it next to a plant. It looks so pretty. There's so many beautiful things. There's so many awesome things that my team uses. I follow a bunch of people on Facebook and Instagram, and they're just so fun. Check them out. Um, you want an outdoorsy feeling? Get a lantern. Even somebody suggested taking small reed sticks that I used to use in my diffusers. Excuse me, my reed diffusers, not my diffusers. In my reed diffuser, and put little sticks in the bottom of the bottle in your in your actual uh, Young Living bottle. And when you still have a little bit of oil in there, it can emanate up through the reed sticks, and you can leave it in your bathroom or in a small room. Um, you can put a little oil on some cotton balls and put it in a stinky shoe or put it in your linen closet. Keep your linen smelling fresh. Um, my a friend of mine who's also a Young Living member told me that um, a family member of hers just passed and somebody's been having a really hard time with everything and she's been trying her hardest to help him out, not to be too sour. But I told her, put a little bit of citrus fresh on the cotton balls and just put it in the medicine cabinet. So when he opens the medicine cabinet in the morning, he just gets a little something, something positive, um, just to make him feel good because we all deserve to feel good. Uh, cut up some cucumber and melon and leave it in your refrigerator. Pop open the door cucumber melon, right? You don't have to get it in a bottle full of wax. 
whatever kind of wax. But don't get me wrong, I have not made any do-it-yourself candles, and if anybody does and has the research on them and really can you know, promote some for us, then please do share, because I, I'm sure everyone has different likes and would love to hear your, um, your suggestions, okay? So that's it for me. I will ask if you could, please, if anybody wants to share any information about what their recent ditches were, um, what are your favorite room sprays? What are some of your favorite diffuser blends and scents and why and how it makes you feel good? And do it yourself candles and how to clean your diffusers, what works best for you. This is learning, we learn from each other every day. I love it. I wish everybody a very happy, a very healthy, a very well-scented, safe, non-toxic week. Best to everybody. Take care and thanks for listening.